Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come together to celebrate the seventh Sunday of the year, the last Sunday before we enter into the Lenten season. And Jesus today challenges us about the way we react to those who are in one way or another, unjust. For the times perhaps you notice we have been unjust. Let's pause now and ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason with your neighbor, lest you bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and, gracious. and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and rich in mercy. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. 
The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and, and gracious. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. As a father has compassion to his children, the Lord's compassion is on those who fear him. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and that temple you are. Let no one deceive themselves. If anyone among you thinks that they are wise for their age, let them become a fool, that they may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. It is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So let no one boast of men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and the Christ is God's. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever keeps Christ's word, in him truly love for God is perfected. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist one who is evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your coat, let them have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who begs from you, and do not refuse him who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons and daughters of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you salute only your own, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You, therefore, must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I decided to Google the word revenge, and I was quite surprised at what came out. There is something called revengeguy.com, or another one, getrevengeonyourex.com. And both of these websites offer tips on how to get revenge. Some are simply just pranks, but others are actually quite nasty. Revenge is perhaps so much part of the way that we want to act or react to the ills, to the wrongs that have been done to us, the hurts perhaps that we have experienced through others. Revenge is often our 
reaction to injustice and hurt. In today's gospel, we hear of a counterintuitive or a counter cultural position. We know the first bit an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You don't have to look too far in our world to see that. That's what we human beings do naturally. It's the second bit that is really challenging for us. Do not, Jesus says, resist the evildoer or turn the other cheek. The gospel that we listen to, the gospel that is supposed to regulate our lives, goes against our human inclinations. It doesn't deny that people do terrible things, that people treat each other badly. But, Jesus says, despite that, strive to be perfect as God is perfect. Perhaps a line from Oscar Wilde captures something of the insight that Jesus offers us in the Sermon on the Mount. We're still on the Mount of Beatitudes. Jesus is still preaching a very long sermon. I'll try and be shorter today than Jesus. But Oscar Wilde says, As one reads history, one is absolutely sickened, not by the crimes that the wicked have committed, but by the punishments that the good have inflicted. And I think Jesus wants us to ask the question today, what does revenge do to me? Maybe there's three things that we're invited to pay attention to as we grapple with this very difficult part of human life. The first one is that Jesus believes in us. Jesus believes in the margins or the more. God wants us to be more, to recognize the power that we have within us to overcome even the terrible things that others have done to us. St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians says, you are God's temple, God's spirit. The life task of Jesus is to invite people to become more, to recognize the margins in their lives, to grow, to not allow things like revenge to diminish us, but rather that we overcome that by growing. Perhaps the second thing is Jesus is inviting us to consider, do we want to conquer or to be conquered? Who has the power here? When I hate, when I seek revenge, I give others power over me. Perhaps my blood pressure goes up. It affects my health and my happiness. Because revenge offers others the power. It gives others the power. They say that the only way the bullet of hurt Resentment and revenge can hurt our enemies is if it passes through us first. Do we allow ourselves to be conquered by the hurt that has been done to us? Or rather, do we react in a way that means ultimately we are the conquerors and not being conquered? And third and finally, perhaps the invitation for us to, is to consider that God has given us all the gift of choice. And Jesus reminds us today in that Sermon on the Mount that we can choose how to act and to react. The basis of being human is that we are free to choose what we will do. Nobody can force us. We choose. Living examples always speak louder than words. We in South Africa have many of those living examples. Think of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, for example. Think of someone like Nelson Mandela, who in his book, The Long Walk to Freedom, 
makes a powerful statement which can teach us something. He says, I knew that people expected me to harbor anger towards whites, but I had none. In prison, my anger towards whites decreased, but my hatred for the system grew. I wanted South Africa to see that I loved even my enemies while I hated the system that turned us against each other. What or who in our lives holds the power? The power of revenge, which ultimately diminishes us, or the power as Jesus invites us another way, a countercultural way, a counterintuitive way that frees us and frees those who have hurt us. Let's now together make a profession of faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's invitation to let go and therefore to free ourselves. Let's now bring our needs, our prayers before God. Jesus tells us, Your Father in heaven causes the sun to rise and the rain to fall on bad people as well as good. In trust we now turn to God, our loving Father, and pray for Pope Francis and the whole Church, that men and women, clergy and religious, may always be faithful to their life of prayer and good works. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our world and its environment, that exploitation may end and that there will be respect for all living creatures. We pray, too, that all the world's riches may be shared with generosity and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who persecute our brothers and sisters in faith, we pray that God's spirit of peace may turn their hearts from ways of violence to ways of reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all whose minds are closed to the ways of God, that the gentle promptings of the Spirit may lead them into communion with the God of truth and life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered in this online community, that God would give us the grace of awareness of others who worship together. Let us pray for all of those who are together at this Mass. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick or in pain, that God will crown them with love and compassion and give them healing and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers, spoken out loud, and we offer you too the prayer in our hearts through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of Christ's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that whatever we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill as we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, which takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. 
And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord himself taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By the God of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is, which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before the final blessing, this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and there will be a Mass available online at 9 a.m. on Ash Wednesday. And in order to help you to participate, we're inviting you to have some ash ready. We normally get these ashes from the palms that uh, were used the year before. We can, we can burn them. But if you don't have access to that, any other shrubbery that you can burn to, to make ash or, or maybe even some wood will be okay. But have your ash ready so that you can also join in marking the beginning of that sacred uh, season of Lent. For those of you who want as well, there will be a day of prayer at the Jesuit Institute here in Auckland Park. And so if you live in the Johannesburg area and want to join us, please contact us. We maybe have uh, uh, Monday, we will have to decide on the numbers. But if you'd like to contact us tomorrow morning and uh, see if there's still place to join us for that day of prayer, which will be led by Dominican Father Martin Bardenhorst. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.